When NASA launched the Voyager 1 in 1977, the scientists working on the project had no idea how long this mission would last. They didn't know that this small spacecraft would become one of the most remarkable and fascinating achievements in human space exploration, marking an era in the collective imagination and inspiring future generations. Although Voyager 1 has witnessed the universe like never before, providing data and observation for countless discoveries, nothing prepared it for the recent signal it received from a nearby star. Has Voyager 1 become the first probe used by another celestial body to communicate with humans on Earth? Let's get to the bottom of it. The launch of Voyager 1 took place as part of the Voyager program, which involved designing and constructing two identical probes. Although Voyager 1 was created first, it was Voyager 2 that was launched a month before the other. Voyager 1's mission was to study Jupiter and Saturn, with particular attention to the Titan satellite, its magnetic fields and rings, and to photograph the respective natural satellites. Hence, the probe traveled in space for two and a half years after its launch to reach Jupiter, where it began its odyssey of discoveries. The probe passed the gas giant on March 5, 1979, and continued photographing it until April, only to pass the job to Voyager 2 later. The two probes collectively made several discoveries on Jupiter and its moons. Thanks to Voyager 1, scientists found out about Jupiter's complex system of moons and discovered four of its largest moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. One of its observations led to the remarkable discovery of sulfur volcanoes on Io, a feature that had never been seen on the planet from Earth. In fact, Pioneer 10 and Pioneer 11 had missed it too. The pictures of Io were astonishing and left the entire scientific community shocked. They found a plume, a volcanic eruption in one of the images of Io, which completely contradicted their expectations of a dull and frozen ball of rock and ice. For hot magma to occur on a celestial body that is almost 500 million miles away from the sun's warmth is certainly astonishing. The explanation scientists reached was that Jupiter has an intense gravitational pull that tugs and grinds the rock of Io, creating vast lakes and channels of liquid hot magma and volcanoes that erupt from the moon's surface out into space. Can you believe that some lava fountains on Io can reach as high as 250 miles? Voyager 1's data placed Io at the top of the list of most volcanically active bodies in the solar system. Voyager 1 also discovered that Jupiter had a powerful magnetic field and intense radiation belts, which presented a unique challenge for any spacecraft trying to inch too close to the planet. After the exciting mission of Jupiter, Voyager 1 continued towards Saturn, where it struck gold again with massive discoveries. The closest the probe got to Saturn was on November 12, 1980, when it was just 120,000 kilometers from the planet. It discovered that Saturn had hundreds of rings, each made up of thousands of individual particles. Voyager 1 did a lot of work on Saturn, especially Titan, using a remote sensing technique called radio science occultation that measures a moon's physical characteristics. This instrument allowed scientists to identify the density profile, composition, pressure, and temperature of the planet's surface. And when the data started rolling in, a frenzy was unleashed at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, Building 264, where all the scientific teams were gathered for the two weeks' flybys. The first set of data received pointed towards the possibility of liquid nitrogen on Titan's surface. However, the science team later changed their interpretation. They concluded that Titan wasn't cold enough for liquid nitrogen, but could have liquid methane. Since Voyager 1 couldn't peer through Titan's thick atmosphere, the team had no option but to observe the orange haze around it and guess what lay at the surface. However, their assessment was proven right two decades later when the Cassini spacecraft landed the Huygens probe on Titan's surface. Cassini confirmed that lakes and rivers of hydrocarbons, predominantly methane and ethane, do, in fact, flow on Titan. Did you know this information opens up the possibility of life in these frigid waters? Who knows what Dragonfly, the next planned spacecraft to Titan, will reveal about its surface when it is launched in June 2027. Voyager 1 is now 24 billion kilometers out, and about a half times further than the distance between the Sun and Pluto. It is currently exploring uncharted territory that scientists never believed would be possible. The probe has to constantly battle harsh conditions in interstellar space as the cosmic rays and interstellar radiation bombards its equipment. 
but the spacecraft has persevered for over four decades without encountering any significant breakdowns. Voyager 1 continues to provide fascinating data about cosmic rays, magnetic fields, and other remarkable features of the interstellar medium as it travels the furthest out in space that any human craft has ever gone. Everything was working smoothly until one day, Voyager 1 sent an unusual signal to Earth, one that left scientists puzzled. Since Voyager 1 is very far from Earth now, it takes 22 hours for a signal to reach Earth. This brings a significant delay in communication between the probe and the team overlooking its operations. Suddenly, one day out of the blue, the Voyager 1 sent data that made no sense. The scientists on the other end, who were waiting to see precise data explaining what Voyager 1's thrusters were doing and what the probe's orientation was, didn't know what to make of the long strings of zeros and 377s it was receiving. The data Voyager 1 was sending suggested that the spacecraft was pointing towards a different direction. However, the fact that scientists were receiving data here on Earth meant the probe's antennae were pointed towards home, the same as it always has. If Voyager 1 was really pointing toward the data it was claiming, how could it continue to send signals to Earth? What made matters more puzzling was the strength of the signals which were unwavering. Here was another clear indication that the probe hadn't changed its direction. Then why did Voyager 1 suddenly go berserk? Immediately after receiving this signal, the team checked the probe's science data, and sure enough, everything looked normal. Although Voyager 1 started its journey with 11 pieces of scientific equipment, five of them had to be shut down while two have stopped working due to general degradation. Thus, Voyager 1 had four equipment active at the time this signal was received, and surprisingly, they were all working just fine. The team here checked the probe's power supply, which looked pretty low, but that's expected, as Voyager 1 had been traveling for much longer than anyone had planned. After checking everything, the team realized that there was just one system that was behaving strangely, the AACS, the Attitude Articulation and Control System. The AACS is a computer that is part of Voyager 1. Its job is to make sure the spacecraft's large 3M antennae continues to point towards Earth. But suddenly the computer started sending incoherent signals and NASA's team wasn't sure what was going on with the probe. The spacecraft comes equipped with emergency safe mode settings, which is alerted when any of the equipment starts behaving abnormally. When the system detects a problem, it powers down temporarily. This allows the team back on Earth some time to figure out how to deal with the problem and fix it before powering the probe back up. But this time, the safe mode settings didn't take over because Voyager 1 thought all its equipment was functioning normally. Why do you think the probe malfunctioned suddenly? Could this be the work of an alien civilization that is trying to communicate with humans on Earth? Here's something you probably didn't know about Voyager 1. It carries with it a golden disk that contains information about the human race. From images of human biology to the sounds of nature, musical symphonies, and mathematical symphonies. Perhaps the probe did encounter aliens and they found the golden disk fascinating enough to reach out to us. After four months of prodding and testing, the team of scientists and engineers still had no answers for the unusual signals received from Voyager 1. They decided to switch over to a backup system so the Voyager 1 could start using a new computer. After all, it wouldn't be the first time the probe switched to another AACS computer after the first one became redundant. However, it turned out that Voyager 1 had actually reverted to the old computer suddenly and was sending corrupted data. The solution looked pretty straightforward. All they needed to do was command the probe to use the right computer again. Sounds like an easy fix, doesn't it? But the real question still remains unanswered. Why did the probe suddenly switch systems? Let us know what you think happened to the probe. Did we really receive a signal from a nearby star? Or is the Voyager 1 an old ship about to become obsolete? That's all for today, folks. Thanks for joining us. Remember to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell for more thrilling space videos.